Hello, welcome to the EMBN show. Uh, more fantastic new uh, long travel EMTBs on today's show. And also some A-listers on electric. <laughs> Uh, now, talking of A-listers, we have the pleasure of having Richard Payne. <laughs> You're too kind. Oh, yes. Thank you, mate. And now then, uh, one of the fastest people in the world on an e-mountain bike. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer like that? coming soon. You like yeah, that? I like it. Yeah, we better be careful what we, what we reveal <laughs> yeah, here, right? Yeah. Uh, now, for those of you who are not familiar with Richard's antics, um, Richard does quite a lot of adventure, cross-country marathon style riding. I do, yeah, on top of a lot of enduro riding and racing as well. So, yeah. yeah. Dip my so, toe in. so, I'm actually interested in racing. So I've got a short travel. Actually, let's kick the show off. We've All got right. um, uh, a Villia uh, Ult, uh, Ert, Erta. Erta Hybrid. It's 120 mil travel. Mm. Uh, Fazua Ride 60 uh, motor on there with um, uh, uh, 210 range extender, 430 watt hour uh, battery on there. Lightweight, 17 kilos, 120 mil travel, yeah. cross country, flying machine. Uh, yeah, do you know what? It's, it's, I mean, and it looks sleek as well, right? It's a, it's a good looking bike. I think so. My, I have a bit of a view on short travel e bikes because I'm not sure they're for me. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> right, so you got all the, you do all the stuff on mountain bikes, yeah. yet, yet this kind of bike isn't for you. No. It's on an e bike form. No. Because? Because I like to smash down hills. Oh, well, actually, I've got a subject for you later. Okay. It's so going, later. I just think when you add a lot of weight to a, a little travel... It's not a lot of weight. 17 kilos. 17 kilos. It's still how quite much, a bit of weight. How much is a cross-country bike? 12, 13? No, get on. They're like 10. Let's have a look at some numbers. <laughs> I, I, I reckon they're more than that. No, I can tell you now, mine's about 10. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, dude. What bike is that? It's a well, it's Canyon Lux, and also okay. I built an Orbea. I built an Orbea Royce, 120 mil, mm. 9.7 kilos. You see, that's interesting then, because lots of you know the difference between uh, say a 150 mil enduro bike and a 150 mil full power e mountain bike yeah. can sometimes only be like three kilos. But yeah. what you're saying here is cross country. Villier Urta Berta, hybrid yeah. versus a full on cross country. Oh, yeah. It's more like Sam Kilo. 100%. Yeah, definitely. The, 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 the gap gets bigger on that sense. What I really think uh, is great about these bikes is when you get above the 25k limiter, yeah. I reckon they're going to be easier. I mean, there's no drag in the Fazua system. They're going to no. be easier to, to maintain that speed if you're riding flatter single track. I agree there. Th this kind of bike is aimed at exactly what it's designed for. Getting out there, big long days, exploring, mm. especially with the range extender that brings, what is the total up to? About 6.30? What hours, I think? Yeah. What did you, yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. 6.30. Yeah. So it's a good size battery. It's a, it's a big day out, Combined right? with a lightweight, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is going to be good for mm. what it's intended for. Yeah. Uh, now, talking about A-listers, more A-listers, <laughs> apart from yourself, <laughs> Jason Momoa. Aquaman has just taken delivery of a new Has lever. he really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, How cool yeah. is that? Look, I mean, that's actually... What? It's actually is what? That, no, it's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing bad. You know? Yeah, yeah. Aquaman's a beast as well. He's a big dude. Have you seen? He's massive. Is he massive? He's a big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a big old guy. But yeah. look at him okay. just cruising around the hotel and he's like... That's his house, Rich. Is it? <laughs> Is it really? No, that's not his house. That's your house, isn't it? Oh, dear. Uh, that's cool, though. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, right, more, more, more bike news. Uh, we're talking with Villier. We're talking with Jason Minamoa. Uh, Industry 9 have now have an online store, online store for European customers. Nice. Now, you've been to Industry 9. Industry 9 wheels. Industry 9 wheels. Right. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I've been uh, out in North Carolina, oh. Asheville, to be precise. Oh, so I just knocked the plants over. Oh. Yeah, I mean, listen, that Hydra Hub. Oh, and that just amazing? It is. So, yeah, uh, over on Tech, me and Anna did a factory tour yeah. for i9. Uh, yeah, solid. But you, you can got one now, of the carbon ones there, But right? you can now actually order your wheels from, I think, the plant is in, in Spain. So, it is, uh, yes. Yeah, put that back. Mm. You can discuss the details. Rich, will I put this wheel back? <laughs> okay, well, let, if, I mean, if you are... Uh, it will be shipped if, obviously, if you're, you're a European customer, all your i9 orders will come directly from their Spanish facility. 
um, dedicated EU customer support as well. So, you know, no long distance calls anymore, Steve. Cheap phone bill. Nice. Yeah, I mean, would you, yeah, you, well, I was going to say you do it on FaceTime anyway, wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> but honestly, super, I, I'm super happy with my industry around wheels. I just love the sound of those hubs. Yeah, I run the aluminium ones on mine because... Uh, I'm, a, I'm an aluminium person. That's Are interesting. You? I'm an aluminium. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you mean the rims, you mean? The rims, yeah. Yeah, I'm an aluminium rim man too. Yeah. Uh, right, let's move on. More bikes. Now, Castle. Uh, Ca- Rich, you're probably a bit young for Castle bikes, aren't you? Uh, now, I, do you know what? I have heard of them in the <laughs> ski industry, innit? Yeah, well, actually, they, yeah. Made, they actually made downhill race bikes in the <laughs> 1990s. And I, I was really... <laughs> I was really surprised that Lauren found this this bike for this week's show. Um, this bike this. here has 160 mil travel, 29 inch wheels, um, but only available in specialist retailers in Austria. Um, That's hen- hen- good. Hen- okay, right. Hence you meant the ski background. Um, <laughs> this comes with a Bosch performance line CX motor, 85 newton meters, uh, yeah. 750 watt hour battery. As I mentioned, uh, 160 fa- travel, 29 inch wheels. Some numbers, Rich. Go on, uh, hit me. 77 C2 bangle, which is bang yeah, on. Yeah, not bad at all. 64 head to bangle and a 465 reach in size large. Maybe a little bit small in size large on the reach. What was the reach again, sorry? 465 Four. in size large. Yeah, that does. Yeah, it's a little short for my liking. Yeah. Um, um, more news is Forestal, uh, if you own a Forestal bike from 2021 uh, onwards with the F60 uh, motor in there, um, Eon you can have Eon Drive, which is a Bafang drive, really, really cool motor. You're actually, um, you can actually update the battery on those bikes because it seems like they did have some problems with the battery management system. But uh, folks, get in touch with, with Bafang, uh, sorry, Get in touch with Forestal, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Get in touch with Forestal and you'll be eligible for a new upgrade. And a replacement, I should throw in there as well, uh, an upgrade to their motor software as well. Excellent. Rich. Yes. Uh, do you know what? What you discussed, what we started talk, talking about there a minute ago with the with the Willier bike, yeah. is that you wouldn't ride a bike like that. Not an e-bike, no. Which I find quite interesting. So um, I did <laughs> see you down in Cheddar. Ah. Where the mini cheddars come from? They probably don't. <laughs> they don't know, but the cheese does. So the cheese and some does. fine cider and all. Yeah, cheese and cider. Oh, anyway, we're getting off topic. Yeah. Yes. Um, I saw you riding some really horrible, nasty limestone on yes, on your tech bike. Yeah, it's up here, right? You're on the canyon. Uh, um, Blake was on the Blake, white. Blake was on the white E160. Yeah. That's tip, dip, that's difficult territory. It's right? greasy, yeah. slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite clay-based soil as well. Yeah. So I was going to ask you mm. what, you know, you, I know you ride motorcycles, you ride, you ride your cross-country mountain bikes, yeah, antiques. Yeah. What do you actually ride? What, what do you use your e-bike for? Going up and down. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a, a slight oversimplification. It is. But to me... You can apply that to road cyclists, exactly, to mountain but, bikers. So I'm going to elaborate for you, okay. Steve. So elaborate away. I either like to... This is the main two things I do on my e-bike. Mm-hmm. Um, just so you know, Up I ride. Down. A, there's, there's two I, things. I ride a Canyon Strive on, uh, you know, 750 yeah, yeah. watt hour battery, yeah. Bosch motor, yeah. 160, 170. But I either go down on it, so I love to just shuttle run. So I mm. will just stick her in turbo. Mm-hmm. Blast it up the fire roads and I'll hit all the down it, like just gnarly downhills nonstop. I love just descending on an e-bike, it's really fun. Mm-hmm. But so is climbing. So I'll just go. Stick it in turbo again. I rarely go out of turbo on my e-bike, ever. Yeah. And I'll go and find like, these nasty climbs just yeah. to try and trials my way up them and stuff. Yeah. I, don't, uh, I don't really go off on a big epic adventure on them, ever. And mm. it's because I, I actually still, I do still like to do that on a, a normal bike, an acoustic bike. And a, what do you, what, what we call them? Call them whatever you want. I call, I, I call them actually now MTB and EMTB. It's the simplest way to do it. On an MTB, because... I like the one, the fact that I can just go for as long as I want. I haven't got any range anxiety. I haven't mm. got any extra worries of maybe electronics going mm. wrong, even though really e bikes are so they are. reliable they are, yeah, now. But, yeah. but my favourite thing is blasting laps mm-hmm. or trials and uphills. Yeah, it's funny you should say that. I mean, I, I'm assuming you're going to ask the question back to me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Any second now. <laughs> Stephen, what do you primarily do with your e bike? Everything. I was only joking. Actually, do you know, funny you should say that. Um, I was actually out on yes. my white uh, E160 uh, compared to the, e, uh, the E-Lite doing a range mm. test. I actually bumped into you. you Lycra clad in the woods, yeah. Lycra clad in the woods with Nick. Now, um, <laughs> do 
you know what? I was riding, like I said, an old school cross country loop, yeah. which uh, incorporated like pretty hardly any surface trails. Just like yeah. natural single track, the roots still intact. Yeah, weaving through uh, the trees. Weaving through. Yeah, yeah, it's so pretty natural. I think now, I think I've come across a new sport, right? <laughs> I think I've come across a new sport. Okay. I know that you come across a new sport on tarmac. Yeah, yeah which we'll get to. We'll get to yeah. later. <laughs> but you know what? When you when you when you're riding like uh, well, for me, the full power bikes especially is that when you've got single track through the trees and you're just going up and down the gears, it actually, it feels like you, I mean, I haven't driven a rally car, not in anger. Yeah. It feels like you're going up and down the gears and you're like trying, you're carrying your speed through there. And like, you get sucked, you get sucked into it and all of a sudden your heart, you're in like zone three, zone four on the heart rate. Yeah. And you just, you know, you, you can go out for now, like a year ago, you'd go for an hour. Nowadays, I, I, I went out for two hours in turbo <laughs> with a 750 watt hour battery in, yeah, my, yeah. in my YT160. Oh, I, yeah, I, 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 it's mean, a, I agree. It's a mega, but like, it's quite ironic that, you know, I come from a ba downhill background and I don't really do any of that anymore. Yeah. Well, I do, obviously, when I, especially when you go on big trips and you go like 10,000 foot descents. But like, in the local woods, that flat out cross country, up and down, up and down, round, 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 yeah. weaving through the trees, I really love doing that. That's interesting, isn't and it? And I've only recently got tuned into it. Okay. You've got to have the right type of trail for it, I think, because I, I agree, yeah. it doesn't really suit like trail center, which is like, it's all very manufactured. Well, the, I find the, a lot the, of the, the time, grip levels are always the well, same. And you go above the limiter quite a lot. On trail centers? On trail centers, yeah. You like go, old school cross country. Oh yeah, no, not on that, no. Yeah, yeah. Like if you were just doing like a you, typical blue or red loop, should we say, mm. you'll spend a lot of the time above the limiter. And, mm. and I don't, then you're not getting the, the perks, the bonuses exactly, of your e-bike, right? Exactly, exactly. So I think, folks, what me and Rich are trying to say is there might be some non-typical styles of riding which, the, which are out there for the taking. Yeah. You know, you just just because mountain biking does bike parks and trail centres, try something oh, a bit different, you know? Yeah, yeah. E-bikes and cross-country trails. I, I do fully agree. I think that e-bikes now are so much more capable than just pigeonholing them into uplift weapons and, mm -hmm. and lapping that you can... I'm just saying I don't, but you can definitely go for a lot longer mm. on them and get, and get mm. out there and adventure. And, and we yeah. know a lot of people that do. Yeah, folks, let us know what type of riding you do on your e-mountain bike. And maybe even could be some snow riding on fat bikes Ooh. even. <laughs> cool places to ride. This is following on from our discussion. Yes. Um, Blankets Creek. GA, where's GA? What state's that? It's in the USA. Yeah, what state is it though? Uh, Georgia? Huh? Georgia, thank you. Georgia. Georgia, thank you, cameraman. Yeah, this is from Riley. It's a 2022 transition repeater. It's a transition repeater. <laughs> uh, and there's him <laughs> moving back across the Atlantic in Macclesfield Canal near Marple. Not Georgia. Oh, look at this next shot. Oh my God. Cam hey. Kamenjak Peninsula, located in the southernmost part of Istria, Croatia. This That's is well actually nice. um, in Istria, I think, is where the third gen Levo was launched. I mean, what an amazing. Look at the colour of the water. I want to go for a swim. Oh my God. Mm. Isn't that just That's heavenly? That's a stunning place. Yeah, really nice. So, Rich, would you ride some of that kind of terrain on your e mount? Yeah, because that that's like nibble, like. Ch -ch 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 -ch. See, to me, that kind of nibbling around the coast, jump in the water, you know, hang about, lie in the sun, that's, that's my cup of tea, that is. Yeah. That is my cup can of tea. Can we, uh, Robert, can we come stay with you yeah. in Croatia for a bit? Uh, and then Tiago in San Miguel Island. When's oh, San wow. Miguel Island? Grand Canyon. That looks is amazing San, Where's as well. San Miguel Island? Don't know. Um, so, folks, there's a, a quick example of the different type of riding that you guys do. Look so that. that last one's amazing. I know. So, please, please keep, keep, keep them coming. Keep them coming in. Uploader is linked in the description down below. Exactly, because Kamenjak Peninsula in Istria, I, I'm, I'm there. And the San Miguel Islands. I'm there. Oh, very nice. Very, I'm a little bit jealous. That's left yeah. me jealous because it's currently minus one out here in the UK. <laughs> right, time for some feedback from you lovely people out there. Now, this is from Paul Liddell, 2517, and he asks Steve, he's got about 4K for a new bike. What are the recommendations for him? What have you got? Uh, well, Paul, actually, uh, me and Anna did... Uh, quick rundown of bikes around about three to four thousand pounds in show 
Well, for the last three twelve, the show three twelve. I think the title of the show is SEG Motors. But within that that show, we do a, a, like a five minute section about bikes which are three to four k, um, which is I'd say rich. But money would you, would you spend on a, on a on a mountain bike or an e mountain bike? Do you know what? I'm gonna uh, my sensible answer these days. Well, you've got, an, the, you've got an insensible answer. Spend, as well. No, I've got two <laughs> answers. Spend the money you can afford to. Interesting. Do you know what? Like, there are bikes out there for thousands and thousands, and they're they're very good bicycles. But if you can't afford them, don't put yourself in a hole for it. And you can also get a very very good bike for a lot less as well. I wouldn't like to put a number on it, and I don't. I genuinely think just buy the best you can and sensibly I mean, afford. I mean, you know, we rode the can the Canyon Spectre on CF8 hmm. in Italy in the summer. That bike is, I think, that bike is four five nine nine. So I think what people sometimes get confused with is that just because you got you're spending more money on a bike doesn't always mean you're getting higher performance. No, we talked about this in the office, didn't we, briefly? We did. It is quite <laughs> heated. Um, so I, I, I think I think the CF8 right is a fantastic bike. Right? You can yeah, do, yeah, agree. It's got the same motor, same battery as the say the CF9. Part. As, exactly. So. 100%. Um, Paul, I reckon you're, you're going to get an amazing bike. Uh, next up, Steve. Yeah, this is one for you, surely. I have okay. F, this is from uh, uh, Mech A700. I have an extra set of Maxxis downhill tires, and I'm thinking of maybe it's a good idea to put them on my e-bike, Canyon Spectrum. What do you guys think? 100%. Uh, well, depends on the width, right? I guess... Uh, uh, providing they fit. Maxxis D8s are going to be acid guys on Minion DHRs. Yeah. 2.5s, I mean, heavy case and tyres every day of the week. Always. I think what you'll find as well is you can run lower pressures with down case and tyres. Uh, yeah. This time, well, I actually don't know what part of the world you're from, but... Or um, what type of riding you're doing on it. But I would always, I would go for the thickest tyres and sturdiest tyres I can on the Yeah. Bike. Sacrifice the weight, reduce the chance of punctures. Yeah. You're probably going to have better grip, better compound. They might wear out a little bit quicker, so in the long run yeah. it might cost you a few quid, but I would, yeah, definitely and do you know go what? for it. More confidence. Yeah. Yeah, easy peasy. Uh, NJ Cycling Guy asks, Steve, are you aware of any full size e-bikes with a mid-drive motor and a throttle? Um, don't really ride. We are. I mean, there are some throttle bikes out there. Um, what's quite interesting, actually... Well, uh, a throttle's illegal, right? On trails, yeah. I mean, mm. you can ride... Only on through, private land? Well, you, on private land and certain parts of... Certain states in the US, you can ride oh, throttle. okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, what I'd say was, if you if you're thinking e bike throttle, why not take a look at maybe like a an e trials bike, something like a yeah. like an offset or electric motion. Yeah. Um, I got a recommendation. Uh, I've actually got one. A, what? Yeah, yeah. It's a KTM 350 SX. No. Absolutely amazing. That, yeah, this is a massive stroke. curveball. <laughs> Some motocross bike, but hey ho. Oh, it's not an electric one. No. <laughs> oh, you idiot. <laughs> Oh, you would, yeah. But uh, I would recommend the four-stroke, lovely and smooth to ride, <laughs> Steve. No, you're dead right. You're dead right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna get a throttle, maybe get like a. Uh, no, I agree. An, the an in, internal combustion engine as well. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure we helped him thanks. too much. Thanks. So, well, we did. Oh. Folks, thanks so much for your for your feedback. I hope we're able to help. So keep those questions coming um, on any any subject you want. Like like I've said on previous shows, is that just because we don't formally test uh, e-mountain bikes, although riding through a river up to here yeah. is actually kind of testing what a motor we can do. We do put them we through do, their paces, right? We do, and yeah. also, so you can actually ask us any question you want to, and we'll give you a totally honest answer, and maybe a kind of an opinion on it at the same time as well. Moving on then, Steve. Rich, yes. you might not be familiar with this part of the show. It's a bit of a look back, a bit of an archive. Okay. And the reason that uh, Lauren's picked this piece this week is in relation to what you kind of said about cross-country bikes. Now, I don't know if you saw that uh, Eurobike is probably five months away from us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in last year's Eurobike, we caught up with Danger Home and his... Yes. Scott, I don't know if you Scott saw his Scott e-bike. Super light. Insane. Yeah, so, I did see it, yeah. It's great, actually, because I'm now to come, able to come back at you. Ha! Danger Home's bike was 11 kilos. It was, yeah, I agree. With TQ Motors. Yeah, so I guess the main point is that this is the worst licensed e-mountain bike so far. 12.90 kilos, including <laughs> pedals. And that is with a full size for the system, 360 watt hour battery as well. So yeah. So the heart of this bike is the TQ motor. 
HPR yeah. 50, uh, and it's not just a TQ motor, right? No, it's <laughs> not. So, so actually, I had some very good support from TQ on this product. So the, they saw my crazy ideas, a bit like research and development. So that is why they helped so much. So they actually created, for example, a custom carbon no. fiber casing no. for the battery unit. Seriously? With shielding and insulation and everything. So this alone saves 206 grams compared to the stock unit. Right. So that's quite significant just yes, for the casing. And, you know, wow. it's all the performance, but, but less weight. It's, the, also, it's also beautiful, right? It's also beautiful. So it's, it's a bit of a shame to hide it inside <laughs> the, the frame, you know? Uh, so just have a little read of your script here, Steve. That, what does that say? Of how heavy is this bike? Uh, 12.9. Or maybe it's a spelling mistake. <laughs> Accounting <laughs> error. It's just a kilo. It's not, it's two kilos. Okay. Now I know where the numbers went wrong. <laughs> Cut. That's that bit. Steve, bike vault time. Yeah, I see you're yeah. engrossed in I the am. first picture there. I Who am. have we got? Ah, this is uh, this is Scott with um, two high bike all mountains. His and hers. I, I don't know, but I think it's super nice because it's a beautiful brace of bikes. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, didn't expect that. Uh, next up in Porth Kerry, uh, oh, Barry. Barry no, Island. Isn't that where a Gavin Stacey comes from? Famed for Gavin Stacey. Yeah, this yeah. is a cool picture though. I yeah. like this actually. It's nice. Gavin it cubes too. Yeah. I, I think it's very different. I think it warrants a super nice for sure. <laughs> Uh, go oh, on then, Rich, your turn now, your turn. Oh, this is a cool picture. This is from Ian. This is his Scott Ransom 910 from the central Scottish Highlands. I wonder if this was recent, because it's not fully snowy, but uh, just out enjoying the bike in the late afternoon. I, that's cool. Can I say to Leo, look at the backlight on that? Yeah. That's a super nice from us here, definitely. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Rich, next uh, one. Another one, a Giant Rain E plus one. This is from Michael. Uh, Kath Gimbray's back up in Scotland again. What's your thoughts on rear mudguards? Mm, they serve a purpose, but they look dreadful. Mm, it's a shame, isn't it? They just, I've not really found one, and I don't want to hate on them, but I've never found one that looks... Why, though? Well, they just don't. They just, they're big and bulky, and they just... They why just, is why why I think they take away from the aesthetic. So if you look at that bike, how that top tube runs yeah, but, nicely into the but seat why, stays. Why has the mountain bike industry not actually done nailed it? I mean it took it took them it took oh, them 30 know. years to, for Fox for mud guns in the front of their on their forks. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's insane. Uh, no, but, uh, hang on, what are we giving it? What are we giving Michael? That's a cool bike, I like it. Super nice. Very generous of the, the super nice. The next the shot is probably one of the most super nices yeah. of super nice shots ever. Yeah. <laughs> Sierra de Francia in Salamanca. Um, Where's Salamanca? Eight does Spectral on uh, in Spain. Thank you. Um, I think this is a super, super nice shot. So mega. I still like it. It's a, it's a super, super wow. nice shot. Okay. Do you know what? I like the reflection. Ato, thanks so much for sending that in. That is like, that, I'd like that, to that's that one shot. of the highest quality, that's of the highest quality for the bike vault. Because that reflection's actually really crisp. Spectral on eight, DVO upgrade. Little, see, look at the little mud guard on the it's, back of that. You can, you can have it both ways, can you? Uh, folks, thanks so much for some amazing images. Like I said, Ato's uh, Spectral coming, on right? there. Yeah. Send I them think, in, uploader again is linked down below. If you can top this picture, well, we'll be flipping impressed. Uh, folks, that Ugh. is that, and that is it for this week's EMBN show. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, don't forget to tune in to the channel on Sunday, where my very fast colleague is putting a time down on a de-restricted e-bike. And let me tell you what, it's what, got a lot of watts. Watch out world. What? <laughs> it's all about the watts. <laughs> How many you, watts mate. was it? Was we it a thousand watts? Uh, well, we actually peaked at 1200s. Whoa! Yeah, I'll just show Folks, <laughs> you. Folks, whatever you do, don't miss Sunday's video. Thanks for joining us. See ya.